Today we're going to be checking out another portable solar generator from Flashfish, and I believe this is the Flashfish A101. And this is, yeah, just a portable, they call it solar generator, but portable power bank. It's got lots of functions. We're going to test all those out, and we're going to see if maybe this is something that's perfect for camping or hiking or just for around the house. So let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be testing out this portable solar generator from Flashfish, and this is the A101, and uh, yeah, like I said, lots of different functions. We've got lithium battery built in, AC output, DC output, two USBs, and also two PD USB-C outputs. Let's see what else the box can tell us. Here's some features. Excellent gear to power up your life, compact design with tough structure, built-in high-quality lithium battery, excellent smart and safe ultra-bright LED flashlight, and it supports MPPT technology, so that's going to be for your solar input. Got some safety protections here, and yeah, that's about it. So let's go ahead and open this up, see what it comes with, and see what it looks like. All right, so here it is. Here's the portable power bank solar generator, and to give it some size reference, this is an iPhone, probably an iPhone 11 Pro. I don't even think this is the Plus. So, yeah, very compact. I would say maybe 5 inches by 5 inches or so, which leads me to want to know what the specs are. And, of course, it comes with a book. We'll be checking that out to see what all the different specs are, what it's rated for, and what it can do. And then we'll test all those out. It also comes with a DC charger. So charging this from your car it comes with an AC charger. And then it comes with a little carry strap handle thingy, which is pretty cool. Looks like it might attach right there so you can carry it around with you or dangle it off of a backpack with a carabiner. But let's take a quick tour around the device itself and see what it looks like physically. So like I said, this is all plastic. It's got some good weight to it. We've got a couple USB-Cs, a couple USB-As. We've got a DC input and we got a DC output. Now I've used these DC outputs before. You can either barrel jack that right to something like a router or a switch at your house, or they also make little outputs that will give you a 12 volt output cigarette lighter plug. I've seen those too, but this one unfortunately did not come with an adapter of any type, but it's nice to have that output just in case. Looks like we got a little screen here with the button for AC and a power button itself. We got a button on top here for this looks to be pretty large light panel back here, so that's pretty cool. And then we got ventilation over here, got to keep it cool inside. And then we've got our AC output over here. So pretty decent design. We got all of our specs down in here in the bottom that we're going to take a look at. But yeah, very portable. We're going to see what it can actually do. You got to always manage your expectations when you have something this small as to what it can run. But let's start talking about some of the specs. So what I usually like to do is check to make sure that the sticker down here that has all the specs on it matches the book. And if they both match, then I have a pretty good idea that they are correct, of course. Sometimes these get printed after these or vice versa. But everything seems to match up. So let's talk about some of the uh, specs here. The most important, I would say, is going to be the battery. How big the battery it is. And that's basically going to dictate how long whatever it is that you're doing with this thing is going to run. And this has a 97.68 watt hour battery in it, which makes it airplane safe. You can carry this in an airplane and it is listed right on there, 97.68 watt hours. It has to be under 100 watt hours to be carried on a plane. And of course, you'll have to carry this on, not pack it into your check luggage. Now, the next thing that we'll talk about is the AC output, because if you're going to put an AC inverter or AC capability on here, you want to know what that is. And that is listed at 120 watts or a peak of 240. So I would just bank on the fact that it can run something that's 120 watts, which isn't a lot, but sometimes you may have something that needs to plug into the AC, like a laptop charger or something like that, that has the three prong that you can't get away with charging it with USB-C. And in that case, yeah, if it's under a hundred watt charger of some sort, that's definitely gonna work. And as far as the DC goes, this lists that it's 12 to 16.8 volts at 9 amps. And I don't know why you would list your output here as 12 to 16 volts. Maybe it's not regulated, but basically just figure it's 12 volts, probably less than a little less than 100 watts output. Very similar to every other type of cigarette lighter plug. But if you've got a 12 volt device like a router or switch, like your cable modem or something that you want to run off of it, then those are definitely going to be less than 9 amps. 
Those are usually one or two amps, so that will run just fine. All the USBs, nice and easy to remember, they're all 18 watts. So you got power delivery, like 12 volts, one and a half amps on the USB-Cs, and then probably the quick charge, 3.0, 18 watts on the USB-As. Now these are lithium batteries, not lithium iron phosphate. So you have around 800 or so cycles before they start degrading noticeably. But every uh, downside has an upside. And in this case, if you need something that's portable, those lithium iron batteries are going to be a little bit lighter weight than lithium iron phosphate. And this is probably not something that you're charging and discharging every day anyways. Now as far as the DC input goes, it says it has an MPPT and that voltage range is 12 to 26 volts at three amps. So basically a 40 watt max input on that. So if you have any of those portable solar panels that are like 18 volts, those are gonna be fine for this because it will go 12 to 26. So a little portable 40 watt pack or even a 60 watt pack, as long as the voltage is correct, will be perfect to uh, bring with you on your adventure. So enough talking about specs, let's go ahead and start playing with this thing. I'm gonna start off by charging it. So let me go ahead and get this set up and plugged in and we'll see what the screen looks like and see how the charging goes. All right, so I've got this plugged in, and since the screen just has a percentage, and it shows that percentage as it's charging up, and it doesn't have how many watts is coming in, like a little watt meter like some of the more expensive ones do, I hooked up this power meter here just to see how many watts it's pulling. Now this little wall wart here, this little DC adapter, is a 26 volt, like 0.8 amp adapter, and that's kind of unique. I figured it would have been like a 12 volt or something, but I guess they wanted to kind of max out this DC input so they can keep the voltage up and keep the current down. And as we look at the power meter here, it says it's pulling about 21.6 watts. So you can figure with the efficiency or so, you're getting close to 20 watts into here. So not super quick. It's definitely not maxing out that MPPT of 40 watts. So if you've got about 20 watts from the charger, and this is a 100 watt hour battery, if this was completely empty, you better bank on about five hours to charge this thing up. So if you're going on a little adventure, go ahead and plug it into the wall about five hours before you're going, and then you'll be ready to go. And just by plugging this in, it turned it on, and it has a little power light here. And it looks like that turned on the DC output, the USB-A and USB-C outputs, and the AC is not on until you turn it on. So, so far so good. It's charging, it's just charging slow. If I've got the right adapters, I may test this out with a solar input of more than that 20 watts, just to see if it works but it's definitely charging, it's just charging slow. So let's go ahead and test out something else. All right, so next up I wanted to see if while it was charging I could still get a USB-C output. So I've got this little USB-C power meter here and this is running over to an iPad Pro, which is off screen. But as we look at the little screen here, it says it's got a little over 12 volts coming out and almost three amps for a total of 35 watts out. Now this said it was gonna be 12 volts at one and a half amps, but it's definitely putting out more than that. Let me go ahead and move this over to the USB-C 2 and see if we get the same thing. And over here we've got five volts coming out and nothing is being drawn from it. So that's weird. Let's go ahead and move it back over to USB-C one. And sure enough, we got 12 volts, almost three amps, 35 watts. So maybe USB-C 2 is only a 5 volt output, and my iPad doesn't like that. But we're definitely getting more power out of USB-C 1 than we thought we were. And it's working while it's still charging. Now let's go ahead and unplug the charger and see if that affects it at all. And it does not look like it. It's still holding 12 volts, almost 3 amps. So it's still getting 35 watts out of here. So that's nice. Now as far as the USB-A's go, I'm sure they work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a test for the AC output and we'll see how that goes. All right, so to test out this AC output, I've got a little extension cord in here just because my power meter would have been upside down and wouldn't really fit well over here. So I've just got that coming over here and then we're gonna plug in this little dipper here and draw some power from it and see how it works. So let's go ahead and turn on the AC inverter. So about three seconds, that turned on. I can hear a little fan in there going. And now we do have power coming out the AC. So let's go ahead and plug in our little dipper. I got it turned off. And let's see what happens. We're gonna turn this on low first. That should be under 120 watts from my previous test. 
and we are outputting 73 watts. That fan is still going on here. Seems to be pretty stable so far. Now this 73 watts right here, if I kept this little dipper on at full charge with 100 watt hours or just shy of 100 watt hours, we'd be able to run this probably an hour or so. Because I'm guessing there's probably about a 20% efficiency coming out of the inverter here. Maybe a little bit less because it's probably not the highest quality inverter. But even still, having a little dipper on for an hour, that should be able to cook up some queso or warm up some soup. Let's go ahead and turn this on high and see what happens. And we're going up to 96 watts. Now I've seen this go higher before. If I plug this straight into the wall, I bet that would go up to about 110 watts or so. So I'm sure the inverter in here is probably lowering the voltage a little bit. Let's see if I can scroll through and see what the voltage is. And yeah, we're looking at like 108 volts instead of 110 or 120 for coming from the wall. Right at 0.9 amps or so. So we are sitting there under 100 watts and it's still going fine. Now of course the higher this wattage goes, and it's only going to go up to 120 or so before it cuts off, the quicker the battery is going to drop, so we can already see that it's dropping down a little bit. But still, for a tiny little thing like this, that you can attach to your backpack or put in your backpack and hike around with to be able to put out 100 watts, that's about standard for most of the entry-level solar generators or power banks that have AC output. You'd have to get quite a bit bigger than this to get up into the 2 and 3 and 400 watt output range. So this seems to be working just fine. So AC output's good, DC output's good. I attached a little strap on here just to see if, how well it worked, and it works just fine. So let's go ahead and check out this light panel back here. Now I've got this turned off, it looks like. So let's see what happens when I hit this light button. And nothing. Let me go ahead and push and hold. And there we go. So that's a pretty good uh, light. Now I can see, I'm sure maybe you can see also uh, the LED matrix back here, and it's got kind of a little frosted lens to kind of diffuse it a little bit, but that works pretty good. Let's hit it again, and we've got a slow SOS blank, and then hit it again to turn off. So, nice little feature. Press and hold once to turn it on. Let's see if I press and hold it again. Yeah, you can bypass that SOS and just go right into the uh, turning it off. So again, perfect little light for a tent, or if you're in a van or something like that, camping, that's going to be plenty of light at night. And I think it says that it draws about 5 watts, so that thing will run forever if you get this thing fully charged up. So yeah, nice little unit. Alright, so this next test might be a little overkill, but I said if I had the right adapters, I would go ahead and test it out, and it looks like I do have the right adapters. I've got this cable, which goes from MC4 Solar panel connectors to uh, lots of different DC outputs and one of them does match this DC in. I think it's probably a 5521 connector. So I've got this running at 18 volts right now, this power supply, and it's not plugged in yet so we're not getting any current draw. But 18 volts kind of a good mid-range for a lot of small wattage solar panels. So let's go ahead and plug this in to the battery bank here. And it recognizes it right away and starts charging. Let's see what we get on the draw here. So a little over, oh, it popped up to one amp or so. There it is, one amp and about 20 watts, about 19.4 watts coming out. So I was hoping this would draw, you know, at least two amps or so to get up to 36 watts because it says it can draw up to uh, 40 watts. And let me double check again what the current rating was. And yeah, it says 12 to 26, 3 amps, 40 watts. So right now it should be able to draw up to 3 amps, and it's not. So let's go ahead and bump this voltage up, because we've got a couple more volts we can go to. So let me make sure I'm on the right digit here. Let's go ahead and crank this up. 20, 21, 22. Let's go up to 25. And the current draw has gone down, so we dropped under 1 amp, 
and we're sticking around 20 to 21 watts or so. So it is charging, but it's definitely not charging at the amount of watts that we'd want it to, and I'm just not sure why. Of course, we've already had the USB-C output double what it said it was. We've got the USB or the DC input half of what it said it was. So that's why we do these tests, just to see what we can get. And unless I'm missing something here, it looks like it's capping out. Let's go ahead and bring this voltage up some more. There's the full 26 that it says. I don't want to go above that, but still only 21 watts. And this is set for a 5 amp limit. So it's not the power supply that's limiting it. It's just definitely the uh, Flashfish power bank here. But let's go ahead and bring this voltage back down. It's like 12 volts. Because it comes with a cigarette lighter adapter. So here's about 13 volts or so. And it is picking up the current. So if you got this plugged into your cigarette lighter as you're driving down the road, it will pull up to 1.5 amps or pretty close to that 20 watts, which is what we were seeing with the AC input and what we're seeing with solar. So I would count on about a 20 watt input max. Keep that voltage in the right range so you don't blow anything up and just bank on about five hours to charge it completely up. So I think that's going to wrap it up for the test. We tested out this thing we looked at the AC output, the DC outputs. We looked at charging options on this. And overall, it's a handy little device if you're going to bring it camping or hiking. Got the light back there as an extra bonus. And a solar input that might not be as much as it said it was, but it still works. So I'll leave some links to this device down in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. But that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I hope this was helpful. If it was, I appreciate the thumbs up. That helps out the channel. Speaking of the channel, go ahead and check it out. Lots of other reviews on battery banks, solar generators, and all kinds of geeky stuff. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.